Tim Cannon wants to live to be a thousand. Not by taking medicine or eating a healthy diet, but like all biohackers, through technology. At a meeting of like-minded people in Germany a few months ago, he had a homemade device implanted under his skin by a tattoo artist without an anesthetic. Uh, and then I think when it's activated, it measures his body temperature and regularly sends the data to his personal computer. What I'm doing is uh, preparing the power coil to charge uh, my device. Uh, we've had it powered down just for healing purposes, um, but I've been able to power it up and uh, put a um, connect it to a Bluetooth and what have you. Yeah, I don't know. Since having the device implanted, Cannon has had to take medication to keep his body from rejecting it. He's already working on a much smaller implant in his basement. The new version is designed to measure blood pressure, pulse, and other levels as well. Since the technology's here, somebody has to start experimenting with it, and it doesn't seem like anybody in the medical community is interested, but I am, so I just said, why not? Cannon believes this technology will soon be used to automatically transmit medical data from millions of Americans to insurance companies. The idea of an omniscient health industry doesn't phase him. I think it's reasonable to be afraid of this technology, just like it's a reasonable to be afraid of nuclear technology, or just like it's reasonable to be afraid of chemical technology, because if it's weaponized, or used to suppress or, or oppress population or suppress dissent, then yeah, it's bad. If it's used to elevate people, make them healthier, make them more connected to their environments and more connected to other people, then it's great. Cannon grew up here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. For decades, the city of 300,000 was supported by the steel industry. Now it's home to universities and research institutes. An alternative scene has developed in various parts of the city. 33-year-old Cannon is part of it. He shares his experiences with kindred spirits in town or via the internet so that other biohackers can benefit from them. All information is available to anyone interested. A lot of biohackers reject the idea of registered patents. Cannon earns his money as a software developer. In his spare time, he started looking for investors to support his self-experimentation. Several thousand people belong to the biohacker scene in the U.S. Like Cannon, many of them see themselves as pioneers. I bet you when the very first astronauts went up into space, right, they might have known the engineers, they might have known the scientists, they might have been completely comfortable with all the science and the measurements, but every time they heard a rattle, you know, they went, oh, no, that's it. I'm in trouble. And it's the same with me. Every time I feel a tingle, the battery's going to explode. San Diego on the West Coast. Here, too, researchers are exploring new territory. Dr. Daryl DeLima is trying to produce cartilage from stem cells. He wants to use it to repair worn out joints with the help of a 3D printer. What we do with the discarded tissue is instead of throwing it away, we bring it to the lab and we try to print fresh tissue, live tissue, with our 3D printer. If that works, someday we think we might be, be able to print directly into the patient's knee. Delima thinks that in three to five years that could be done right in the operating room, thereby eliminating the need to replace disease joints. Modern technology would enable the body to renew itself continually. That means people would live longer. The challenges that I'm facing are so complex and so deep that I've got to have cell biologists, I've got to have stem cell uh, specialists, I've got to have chemists, I've got to have engineers who understand printing technology. And I have to be a generalist who brings all these people together to solve the problem. Unlike the biohackers, Dr. Delima can rely on funding from foundations for his research. For him, 3D printers that print not just cartilage, but even organs, are anything but science fiction. Uh, I think eventually you could replace almost every part of the body except the brain. So the holy grail is how to integrate all these artificial components with the brain and the central nervous system. Humans and machines, whether biohackers or researchers, they're all testing the limits of the possible.
when you see bones. 